Hello, Spencer Kress coming to you from Ankeny, Iowa. It is Monday morning. Today we're going to be wrapping up our section on hands that we shouldn't be playing in early and middle position. Uh, in particular, we are going to be looking at King Jack and Ace-10, and we're going to divide this up into two sections. In the first section, we'll hop on ProPokerTools.com and look at some different scenarios that we might face in games. Everything from a very loose game to a very tight game, and determine that it doesn't really matter the game type, that we're still not going to profitably be able to play these hands. In the second section, we'll hop on Poker Cruncher, which is an app for Android, and in conjunction with a free version of Excel, we'll break down some more specific ranges and look at how often those ranges are dealt. Now the importance of this will be that the ranges we look at will be when we are dominated uh, going to the flop and also dominated going to showdown, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, it should be some pretty good stuff. One last thing, if you want to add me on Share My Pair, I've been taking uh, notes of hands that I've been playing during sessions on there lately, and there's some pretty entertaining ones. And just an FYI, uh, there's some spoilers from a 5, 10, 20, no limit that I played this week, and a very large 1-2 game that I played that we ran ridiculously well in for an hour. So anyway, we're going to put some pictures of the stack sizes there, and also... To add me, I guess you'll need to know my screen name. So, S-U-N-G-A-R-7-8 on Share My Pair. Let's hop into some action and fold some hands in middle and early position. Let's go through this real quick. We're going to hop on Share My Pair for a little visual here. Okay. Now we'll plug ourselves in a spot over here. We're going to be under the gun on this hand. Oops. I have to move this around a little bit. Okay, now count with me. We're under the gun. We're going to be dealt a king jack. And just for the visual, we'll count up. We got one, two, two, three, four, five. Stay with me. Six, seven, and eight if we count the button. Now, eight is um, the important number, so let's remember eight. This. And we're going to go ahead and hop on Pro Poker Tools. Oh. Yeah, my, <laughs> my Google search bar is filled with smut. All right, so we're going to ProPokerTools.com now, guys. Now, like I was saying, we have eight players behind us um, in this hand. So there's a couple scenarios I want to look at. One scenario is with the eight players, we're in a loose game where half of the players are calling with half the hands. Then we're going to look at um, a tighter game where 25% of the players are calling with a 25% range. And then finally we'll look at a range where uh, only one person is calling, but they're calling with a top 12.5% um, range, so one out of eight. So like I said, eight's important. King of diamonds. Ooh. Jack cards. All right. Okay, so first scenario. 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%. So like I said, we're under the gun. We raise this hand, and half of the players call with 50% hands. We can see here that our equity should normally be 20%, and we're not really a big favorite over these players. Let's go back. And this is just a disc poll if there's any argument whether um, you can play these hands in loose games, tight games, anything like that. Okay, three players to the flop, we need 33% equity. You can see there that our 33% is absolutely buried. Let's say we're playing in a tighter game. So maybe we're just, we have some uh, illusion about trying to steal blinds. Now, obviously, what is, oh, yeah, it doesn't like the 12.5. Sorry, guys. We're going to, uh, for simplicity here, we're just going to go ahead and give him 12%. We'll give him uh, 12%. Tighter range, stronger range. And we can see there that King Jack has dominated. Now, let's go ahead and do the same thing for an ace-10 which was one of the things that we talked about in a previous video. 
And I actually haven't run this one yet, but I'm going to expect that we see similar results. But if we're playing in loose games and facing multi-way action, that our hand is not going to perform well. And also that if we play in tighter games and get... Okay, so 1% um, edge there for East 10. Okay. And if we're playing in tighter games as well, that people are... Uh, basically the whole principle of this is that the math is just going to prove to us here that uh, these hands are just not favorites over the field. You can see there that we match up fine against the 25% range, but we're not really making money. And let's give the guy 12% range here. Let's say that one player calls us. And you can see that we're dominated by a 12% calling range. So just a quick recap of what we did here. Um, we're with eight players left to act. We simulate a game where there's very loose action somewhat loose action and then very tight action and you can see that our ace tens our king jacks in these scenarios are not holding up in any of these um in any of these cases okay let's move on to the next section for our second section we're going to hop on poker cruncher and use a free version of excel to look at some more specific ranges now poker cruncher is an app that you can get on uh, google play it costs like eight bucks. I really couldn't recommend it more highly. So the first thing we want to look at is King Jack and all of these scenarios we're going to be facing one hand or one group of hands I should say. And we want to look at how King Jack is going to hold up against those groups of hands. So the first one that we're going to look at is when King Jack is dominated. If you want to go ahead and uh, pause the video and look at some of these ranges, it'd probably be a good idea. There's also some charts coming up later. So if you want to look at them more, um, more in depth later, then that would be just fine. So here, uh, the yellow hands are going to be, uh, they're going to represent the hands that dominate King Jack. Real quick, what we want to do is just go ahead and deal the hand of the river. And we're going to see that King Jack is less than 30% against this group of hands. The last thing we want to look at here is in the upper right hand corner we have that uh, purple 5.14 percent. That percentage is how much of the total range this, uh, how, how much, what percentage of hands that get dealt that this range represents. The next group that we want to look at are hands that are two to one favorites against King Jack if they were dealt to showdown. So we can see up in the upper right hand corner about 10 percent of hands. And these are the groups. We'll go ahead and run this one last time. We can see there are 34% against 65%. So these hands, if they get dealt to the river, are going to be roughly a two to one favorite over our King Jacks when they get dealt all the way through. Now obviously, King Jack, is, and in this scenario, is going to be out of position. So we have to think about it. And a lot of the time we're gonna have a tough time making it to the river. So I also wanted to look at what group of hands have a two to one edge against our hand, which is really significant in poker, if we only deal them to the flop. So first, we're gonna deal our hand only to the flop, and we're gonna plug in a different range. Like I said, these percentages we're gonna look at in a second in Excel and see how likely over the course of the eight remaining players or nine remaining players that we'll face, how likely we'll run, uh, we are to run into these hands. Um, sorry, that was really fast. When I went through, this is what I figured out for the groups of hands that are a two to one favorite against King Jack if they are only dealt to the flop. And you can see it's a big section there, 25.1% up in the upper right hand corner there. And we'll run these numbers. And you can see there a very perfect as opposed to what was uh, before off by a percentage, 33.3%. Uh, against this range having 66.7%. For simplicity's sake, we're gonna plug in ace 10 now and do the same thing, but only a little bit quicker. I've got these ranges saved. And then like I said, we'll hop over to Excel and see how likely it is that we're gonna face these hands, these groups of hands over the course of uh, several players. So here's the group of hands that either ties or dominates an ace 10 
We can see in the upper right hand corner, 5.63% of hands that get dealt. Uh, sorry, we gotta deal it to the river. So let's run this one more time. You can see there conclusively that we have about a 30% uh, equity against those hands. Very bad situation to be in if we're looking to make money. Next, we're gonna bring up the group of hands that if we dealt it all the way to showdown, we would still be a two to one dog. And you can see here, it looks like about fives plus and then ace 10 plus. Um, only 8.08% .08 of the hands that get dealt. However, still, we'll see in a second, still uh, a large enough uh, percentage of the hands that we should still be concerned. Let's go ahead and run it to showdown. See that we are roughly a two to one dog against these hands. And then last but not least, the hands that, since we're out of position and we won't necessarily make it to showdown, our opponent will have some chances to bluff us. This is the group of hands that are going to have a two to one uh, edge against us if we only deal a hand to the flop. So we can see deuces plus, and like I said, pa pause the video um, on here, or even better, download the app and go ahead and pay for it for eight bucks and mess around with this stuff yourself. But we'll deal this to the flop. We can see that that group of hands, roughly a two to one favorite against our ace 10. Now, our last section is gonna be in Excel. Now, this is a table of how often we are going to face the hands that we were talking about. And it'll tell us how likely it is as the number of players increase or decrease. So five columns here. First, obviously our position. Second, the number of hands that are left to act after us. Uh, third column is how likely it will now be to be dominated by the first group of hands. How likely it is as the players increase uh, that the dominated hands are being dealt against us. Uh, fourth column, how often we're a two to one dog uh, if the hand does make it to showdown. Or how, how often a hand will get dealt that is included in the range that is a two to one favorite against us to go to showdown. And then the last section there, to the flop only, uh, right here, how often a hand will get dealt that is a two to one favorite against us uh, if the hand is only dealt to the flop. And like I said, obviously we're out of position in these hands, so it's very important to notice that. One thing I wanna look at, um, in the first video we talked a lot about how we, you know, sometimes could, God, fuck. <laughs> Obviously, this thing fucked with me. Okay, so we're looking at MP1. Now, in the first the first video, we talked about how, you know, some of these, uh, the King Jack and the Ace-10, a lot of the time it's going to be fine to play those on the button, the cutoff, and the hijack. And I talked about how middle position really is the uh, middle position with five players left to act is really the cutoff for when you want to stop playing those hands. Now, a real conclusive argu argument gets presented here. The first one is that about a quarter of the time when we have five hands left to act after us, someone is gonna get a dealt a hand that dominates us um, from this point forward. And the likelihood is that we're gonna be out of position in these hands, so that's a real issue. But really the, the real damning thing for our hand is that about three quarters of the time, people are gonna get dealt hands in a range that are two to one favorites against us if the flop only comes down. So that in and of itself for me is gonna be enough to not want to play these hands anymore. And I know someone had commented on YouTube about how they're still gonna play these hands under the gun. But I mean, if we if we go for uh, further into this and look at, you know, a 92.58% chance of someone getting dealt a hand that's not only going to be playable, but also a two to one favorite against us in the flop and we're spotting a position as well. I think, that, you know, I think these are some really good um, arguments for just folding these hands and banking the extra profit. Like I said, go ahead and pause this stuff if you want to. And if you want to look at it more closely, I think that that's, uh, you know, just fine. Okay, we'll go ahead and save that. We got the same table here for Ace-10, guys. And at the bottom, like I said, we, we plugged in the percentages from Poker Cruncher before that we're going to be hands that, uh, or the possibility that we're going to face these hands versus one player, and then extrapolated it out to, you know, whatever number of players. So 
I also recommended not playing an ace-10 in middle position. And some of these same issues are going to come up here. God, this, uh, this app doesn't want to select things. But we can see the 42.57 at the top of the fucking block for that thing that uh, selected there. Uh, for me, that's going to be a good enough reason to not want to play this hand. Um, I, you know, whatever. There's some arguments in it. Uh, but in a tough game, I'm going to drop the hand. Uh, like I said, you know, playing out of position and against tough, aggressive players, they're just going to bury your equity enough that you're not going to make money. So at the very least, I think that, you know, under the gun, when we're looking at a 63.15% chance that one of our players not only gets dealt a playable hand, but also has position on us, I, you know, that's going to be enough of a reason to make this fold with Ace-10 that for a long time I thought was not a fold. I thought it was, you know, just a standard open. Uh, but, you know, evidently is not. So anyway, guys, go ahead and look at these charts over a little bit more. But I think the uh, the math is really um, pretty self-explanatory here. We looked at Pro Poker Tools, looked at Poker Cruncher, and used Excel to combine some of that data. And this is my argument for it, guys. I think you know, drop these hands after you know if you're if you're in the hijack or later. I know I've done it in the past year or two years, and it's really added to my hourly. I really recommend that you do the same thing. I'm going to sign off for today. Have a great day, guys. We'll see ya. No!